Hell y'all, this is Red Flood, a mod for Hearthspawn 4 that takes place in a world where no one was truly the victor of World War I. We're going to be playing as the East Asian country of Mantetsu, otherwise known as the South Manchurian Governorate. It is a major lifeline for Japan, and it is also a colony dominated by corporate interests. With that said, the situation there is fragile due to the remnants of the Fong Tien army still being around, along with exiled Japanese radicals who threaten to upset business in the region. We start off with four national spirits and they are Corporate Playground, Manchurian Gorillas, Kwong Tong Abuses, and Manchurian Refugees. One important thing to note is that as a colony of Imperial Japan, we are of course their puppet and that means we will most likely have to help them in their war with the Bayong government. Looking at our military, we got 12 divisions in the army, 9 are infantry, 2 are cavalry, and 1 is armor. We have no navy, but we do have an air force that has one air wing but it is massive and consists of 150 fighters. Now for the army commanders of Mantetsu, we have four generals and one field marshal. As for the military technology we have unlocked, we got out today weapons, motorized, light and heavy tanks, and basic artillery. And in the aircraft department, there is basic fighters, naval bombers, and interwar period tactical bombers. The Mantetsu focus tree is decently large in size, but we only have access to some parts of it for the time being. Adding on to what I just talked about, I guess we'll do the focuses, build a domestic air force, expand the home base, an aircraft procurement scheme unless something changes. The Japanese army is all stacked up on our border since you know they're fighting the Bayong government. I know that one of our focuses has the prerequisite of being at war with Bayong too, so hopefully our overlord will drag us into the conflict. The Japanese were kind enough to throw our country in the strife, so the focuses we are going to do now as soon as possible are the three month campaign and an easy peace. We're off to aid Japan. We're not going to contribute much to offensive operations, but we will help their defense. The Japanese are getting ready for a naval invasion. If it's successful, they may be able to capture the enemy capital of Beijing. The ships have been launched, though this whole thing may have been a waste of time, considering that the front lines are already essentially at the landing spot. This whole thing was counterproductive, wasn't it? The Beijing Compromise has been signed, meaning that Japan, and Mantetsu, that's us, has pieced out with the Beiyang government. In the focus tree, we are finally able to do uneasy peace, and after that, we we will do freedom with a question mark. Japan is engulfed in a civil war on the Halm Islands. This development may affect Mantetsu's status as a colony. Yet we're no longer a Japanese puppet and besides that we now have five new military factories we can use for whatever we desire. There is some news about the Japanese civil war. Essentially it's the socialist revolutionaries versus the imperial government loyalists. Just across the border from us, the Korean People's Republic along with the Korean government have started clashing with the Kingdom of Korea. Even with peace, the situation is tense as the Bayong armies are regrouping. The signed peace treaty slash compromise covers the colony for only a year, and to make things worse, we are having issues with bandits. A possible battle with the government in Beijing will be catastrophic for us as they have a minimal total of 40 divisions while we, on the other hand, have 12. Our main infantry template consists of a lot of infantry and some support artillery. At some point we will add one more battalion to this template and once we do that, we will most likely have this be our standard unit for the rest of the game. In the Korean Peninsula, the kingdom died and now there is just a People's Republic and the Republic. The Japanese Civil War continues. It looks like somewhat of a stalemate, although the Imperials are either gaining or losing ground in the north. With the future of Manchuria hanging in the balance, the Japan-affiliated Kwantung Army has decided to step in. This is a response to increased Chinese military activity. In the focus tree, we will complete the Kwantung Army clique, and when possible, we will do the Fong Tian clique and the New Blood. The Japanese stop fighting themselves, and the side that came out on top is the Imperial one. The revolution in Japan has failed. While we're waiting for the Fong Tian to take over the country, we're going to start to focus in Song Chong's house arrest, and once that is complete, we will get a new general. There is a serious amount of Fong Tian forces massing up near the city of Mukden. If the Kuang Tong garrison there is defeated, that will mean the colony will come to an end. Let's have the siege result in a Chinese victory by clicking on Welcome Home Brothers. With that brief skirmish over with, the yoke is broken and Chinese rule in Manchuria has returned. 
Mantetsu's future has been decided. The country's name has become the Fong Tian clique, we got a new flag, and Zhang Suolin has become the country leader, and he comes with his own trait called Generalissimo. Zuolin historically was a bandit soldier and warlord. By the early 1920s, he was the supreme ruler of all of Manchuria and, as you could have guessed, led the Fong Tian clique. He was nicknamed the Old Marshal and, throughout the second decade of the 1900s, fought other Chinese warlords. At one point, he even captured Beijing, but was later pushed back by the Kuomintang. In 1928, he was assassinated by the Japanese, and his death would help pave the way for Japan's later invasion of Manchuria. Due to the recent change in leadership, perhaps, our army has grown in size for whatever reason, and we also have a couple new commanders, as most of the old ones have left us. With the house arrest focus done, Zhang Songchong is now going to be one of our generals. In our timeline, he was a warlord like Zhuo Lin, and he was also the author of some very, how to say, unique poetry. Across the Pacific Ocean, the conservative American party has won the 1936 U.S. presidential election. We get yet another officer for our country, and he is named Wan Fu Lin. Historically, he was a military governor and a member of the Fong Tian clique. To the west, the Orenburg Military District attacks the Russian Empire, who is just a tad bit occupied with a civil war. Pros for dogs. Song Chung has been writing and some French observers have been taking a liking to his work. This has resulted in a French businessman sponsoring his entry into an international futurist poetry duel in the French capital. Do we let him go or not? That is the question. Sure, let's send him off to France. Our guy arrives and spends time in Le Soleil. When the moment comes for him to take part in the poetry competition against a Russian poet, he says a retort that is deemed a, quote, severe burn. With that, he wins the duel and will return home to fight what he calls communist. In the focus tree, we're going to do invite pariahs of the GMD and the grandiose-sounding usurp the Republic. The Russian Civil War ends with the Novorossian General Governorate replacing the Russian Empire entirely. I want to assume Orenburg played a big role in them winning. GMD pariahs is complete and we get two divisions of KMT defectors because of that. We have got another commander and he is named Zhang Zhuliang. This person is the son of Zhang Zulin, our country leader. I'm thinking the usurp the Republic focus is going to get us into a war, and so to prepare for that scenario, I am going to train and deploy as many divisions as possible. The Marco Polo Bridge incident. We don't like the Shanzi group controlling the Beiyang government, and they don't like us. This mistrust has given us the opportunity to start a coup. A bomb was detonated at the Marco Polo Bridge while Fong Tian troops on their way to settle a trade dispute were crossing it. This was obviously an attack on us. The Shanzi were confused by this, and our soldiers descended on Beijing. The outcome of this all remains unclear. We could either have a war or rally a diplomatic response and force the bickering opposing generals to join us. We will go with the latter because it will allow us to annex an entire country without a fight. Because of what we chose in the event, we got some new land and a whole lot more manpower. More focuses, let's do the national government. Follow the old marshal's model and the white terror. Since the Antwey clique to the north has one of our core states, we're going to justify a war goal on them. Along with absorbing the Beiyang government, we also got all their military, which brings our army up to 74 divisions. Another facet of the annexation is the industrial prowess of the Shanzi, which has been added to our own. We will use it to churn out more guns. With the national government focus done, we're no longer the Fong Tian clique. Instead, we are now the Fong Tian government. The focus we just completed that altered the country name also just so happened to give us a war goal on the Chile clique, and you better believe we're going to use it. The strategy we're going to use is one of constant assaults, because why not? We have 4 million manpower and 70 plus divisions. Let's go ahead and justify on the Hunan clique. It will take 215 days to do it, but by then we should have already taken care of the Antwe and the Chile. With the conflict in the south over, we turn to what you could consider part of Mongolia and strike at our next target. A vanguard force of Fong Tian tanks and cavalry have made their way into Antwe territory and should have no problem capturing all the enemy's provinces. The White Terror is in motion and, according to this event, socialists and revolutionaries 
are an ever-present danger, and we must take steps to quell any guerrilla factions or sympathizing communities that may aid radical insurrections. We are presented with two choices. Let's go with the one that will give us a war goal on the Social Democrat Hunan clique. Apparently, the ruling party of Hunan are left-wing nationalists. Whatever, the Fong Tien government thanks their threat, and so we shall go to war. In the focus tree, let's do preempt the South. After that, we will do national unity government. Then we will go up and do chase out the Japanese. The border with our new opponent is relatively small, so we're going to use a fallback line to try and make it wider. With that done, we're going to use our strength in numbers to funnel our divisions into the heartland of the Hunan clique. In the east, our neighbor, the Korean Anarchist Federation, declared war on the Korean Republic. Meanwhile, in Europe, the Russians get a new monarch. In the Korean Peninsula, it seems that the anarchists are losing to the Republic. The National Unity Government focus is done, and that means our country name becomes the Republic of China. Also, we are given claims on the rest of China proper. We're getting ready to march on the Nanjing National Government, and once we're finished with them, we're going to attack the Liangguang clique. In the focus tree, let's get our political branch over with by completing Intervene in the North, and after that, we will move to the more economy-oriented part of the tree and do focuses such as corporate review and the exploitation, open new schools, and test the business leaders. We get a new country to share a border with in the form of the Korean Republic who managed to defeat the Anarchist Federation. We're invading the powers that be of Nanjing, and we should be ready to go after Liang Guang in late October, which is a little bit over a month away, according to in-game time. An event has removed the Manchurian refugees' national spirit, and besides that, we got a core on the state of Sungari. Alright then, since we have become the Republic of China, we might as well try to reunite all of China, and because of that, our next invasion targets are going to be the Fujian Commune, and the Yunnan clique. A corporate review happens with officers, businessmen, stakeholders, unionists, politicians, and some token workers. Several sessions take place, and ultimately the majority believes reform is the best option. New bills have been proposed, and the exploitation comes to an end. As a result, the corporate playground and Kwantung abuses national spirits will be removed. The Seltharosian Soviet Republic to the north, led by Leon Trotsky, controls land that is traditionally considered part of China, and because of that, we will justify a war goal on the somewhat isolated vanguard socialist state. We have almost a hundred divisions at this point, and we're going to just throw everything we have at the foe's front lines until we win. The next countries that will be brought into the Republic by force are the Sichuan clique, the Ma clique, and the Khotan Emirate. We're going to take on the three aforementioned places at once, because why not? We have the men to do it. The Imperial Authority has annexed Xinjiang, which is a place we plan to conquer for ourselves. Guess we'll have to fight the Authority instead. As China, we are invading Tibet, and we may have to take out Bangladesh as well, because they control a state we have a claim on. Oh, and we can't forget about Taiwan, who up to this point has just sort of been existing. Soon, once Bangladesh is defeated, Zhang Zuolin will have all of China under his control. One incursion with way too many divisions later, and we are finished. That was quite the journey. We went from playing as a Japanese colony to being the Fong Tian clique. After that, the Fong Tian government, which would evolve into the Republic of China. And as that, we ended the warlord era and reunited the Chinese people. The video is going to stop here. If you enjoyed the mod, check it out in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Have an awesome day. I'll see you later. Bye.